Chapter One of Poison Romance and Poison Mysteries by Charles John Samuel Thompson. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter One Poisons of Antiquity. Long before the action of vegetable and mineral substances on human beings and animals was known, it is probable that poisonous bodies in some form were used by primitive man. When injured in battle by perhaps a flint arrowhead or stone axe, he sought for something to revenge himself on his enemy. In his search after curative remedies, he also found noxious ones, which produced unpleasant effects when applied to the point of a weapon destined to enter the internal economy of an opponent he doubtless also became aware that the spear-points and arrow-heads on which the blood of former victims had dried caused wounds that rapidly proved fatal owing to the action of what we now call septic poisons this probably led to experiments with the juices of plants until something of a more deadly character was discovered this was the very earliest age of poisoning when pharmacy was employed for vicious or revengeful purposes thus we find that almost every savage nation and people has its own peculiar poison in africa the seeds of strophanthus hispidus or combe a most virulent poison are used for this purpose while explorers tell us that the ancient pygmy race of central africa employ a species of red ant crushed to a paste to tip their arrows and spears the south american indians poison their arrow-heads with curare or urare produced from a species of strychnos and other plants while the malays and hill tribes of india use aconite and other poisonous juices and extracts the antiaris toxicaria is also used as an arrow poison by the malays the bushmen of the south african district kalahari use the juice of the leaf beetle deamphidia and its larva for poisoning their arrowheads lewin who calls the beetle deamphidia simplex found in its body besides inert fatty acids a toxobumin which causes paralysis and finally death according to berm the poison from the larva also belongs to the toxobumins and stark states that it causes the dissolution of the colouring matter of the blood and produces inflammation a halo of mystery sometimes intermixed with romance has hung about the dread word poison from very early times in the dark days of mythology allusions to mysterious poisons were made in legend and saga thus a country in the far north was supposed to be ruled and dominated by sorcerers and kindred beings all of whom were said to be children of the sun here dwelt aetes perses hecate media and circe Hecate was the daughter of Persis and married to Aetes, and their daughters were Medea and Circe. Aetes and Persis were said to be brothers, and their country was afterwards supposed to be Cocles. To Hecate is ascribed the foundation of sorcery and the discovery of poisonous herbs. Her knowledge of magic and spells was supposed to be unequalled. She transmitted her power to Medea whose wonderful exploits have been frequently described and depicted, and who by her magic arts subdued the dragon that guarded the golden fleece, and assisted Jason to perform his famous deeds. Hecate's garden is described by the poets as being enclosed in lofty walls with thrice-folding doors of ebony, which were guarded by terrible forms, and only those who bore the leavened rod of expiation and the concealed conciliatory offering could enter towering above was the temple of the dread sorceress where the ghastly sacrifices were offered and all kinds of horrible spells worked medea was also learned in sorcery and an accomplished magician it is related that after her adventures with jason she returned with him to thessaly 
on their arrival they found aeson the father of jason and peleus his uncle who had usurped the throne both old and decrepit medea was requested to exert her magical powers to make the old man young again an operation she is said to have speedily performed by infusing the juice of certain potent plants into his veins some years after medea deserted jason and fled to athens and shortly afterwards married aegeus king of that city aegeus had a son by a former wife named theseus who had been brought up in exile at length he resolved to return and claim his parentage but medea hearing of this and for some reason greatly resenting it put a poisoned goblet into the hands of aegeus at an entertainment he gave to theseus with the intent that he should hand it to his son at the critical moment however the king cast his eyes on the sword of theseus and at once recognized it as that which he had delivered to his son when a child and had directed that it should be brought by him when a man as a token of the mystery of his birth the goblet was at once thrown away the father embraced his son and medea fled from athens in a chariot drawn by dragons through the air circe's charms were of a more seductive and romantic character she is said to have been endowed with exquisite beauty which she employed to allure travellers to her territory on their landing she entreated and enticed them to drink from her enchanted cup but no sooner was the draught swallowed than the unfortunate stranger was turned into a hog and driven by the magician to her sty where he still retained the consciousness of what he had been and lived to repent his folly gula the patroness of medicine and a divinity of the Acadians, was regarded by that ancient people as the mistress and controller of noxious poisons as far back as five thousand years b c according to some authorities the hebrew word kasaf translated in the old testament scriptures as witch meant poisoner scott states the witches of scripture had probably some resemblance to those of ancient europe who although their skill and power might be safely despised as long as they confined themselves to their charms and spells were very apt to eke out their capacity for mischief by the use of actual poison so that the epithet of sorceress and poisoner were almost synonymous the oldest egyptian king menes and attalus philometer the last king of pergamus were both learned in the knowledge of the properties of plants the latter monarch also knew something of their medicinal uses and was acquainted with henbane aconite hemlock hellebore etc other egyptian rulers cultivated the art of medicine and there is little doubt that probably through the priests who were the chief practitioners of the art of healing they gathered a considerable knowledge of the properties of many poisonous and other herbs prussic acid was known to the egyptians and prepared by them in a diluted form from the peach and other plants it is highly probable indeed that the priests had some rudimentary knowledge of the process of distillation and prepared this deadly liquid from peach leaves or stones by that method the penalty of the peach is alluded to in a papyrus now preserved in the louvre which points to the liquid being used as a death draught the ancient greeks like the chinese of to-day looked upon suicide under certain conditions as a noble act for which poison was the usual medium their death cup was mainly composed of the juice or extract of a species of hemlock called by them sicuta the chinese from remote times are supposed to have used gold as a poison especially for suicidal purposes and at the present day when a high official or other individual puts an end to his life it is always officially announced he has taken gold leaf a curious phrase which probably has its origin in antiquity 
nicander of colophon a greek physician who lived 204 to 138 b c in his work on poisons and their antidotes the earliest on the subject known describes the effects of snake venom and the properties of opium henbane colchicum cantharides hemlock aconite tuxicum probably the venom of the toad bupretes the salamander the sea hare the leech yew decomposed bull's blood milk and certain fungi which he terms evil fermentations of the earth and as antidotes for the same he mentions lukewarm oil warm water and mallow or linseed tea to excite vomiting the same writer also made a rough classification of the poisons known in his time twenty-two in all and divided them into two classes viz those which killed quickly and those which killed slowly of the minerals arsenic antimony mercury gold silver copper and lead were used by the greeks the antidote recommended in case of poisoning being hot oil and other methods to induce vomiting and prevent the poison being absorbed into the system bull's blood is classed as a poison by various ancient writers and it is recorded that Aeson, midas king of phrygia plutarch and themistocles killed themselves by drinking bull's blood it is probable that some strong poisonous vegetable substance such as secuta was mixed with the blood dioscorides throws a further light on the poisons of antiquity in his great work on materia medica which for fifteen centuries or more remained the chief authority on that subject he mentions catharides copper mercury lead and arsenic among the animal poisons are included toads salamanders poisonous snakes a peculiar kind of honey and the blood of the ox probably after it had turned putrid the sea hare is frequently alluded to by the ancient greeks and was evidently regarded by them as capable of producing a very powerful poison domitian is said to have administered it to titus it is supposed to have been one of the genus aplysia among the gastropods and is described by the old writers as a dreadful object which was neither to be touched nor looked upon with safety among the poisonous plants enumerated by dioscorides are the poppy black and white hellebore henbane mandragora hemlock eliterin and the juices of species of euphorbia and apocinia medea is said to have been the first to introduce colchicum the black and white hellebore were known to the romans and used by them as an insecticide and pliny states that the gauls used a preparation of veratrum to poison their arrows arsenic was employed by the greeks as a caustic and for removing hair from the face while copper mercury and lead were used in their medical treatment the study of poisons was forbidden for a long period and galen mentions the fact that only a few philosophers dared treat the subjects in their works in the east poisons have been used from remote times not only for the destruction of human life but also for destroying animals arsenic aconite and opium being employed by the asiatics for these purposes the hindus have many strange traditions concerning poisons some being attributed with the property of causing a lingering death which can be controlled by the will of the poisoner but this is doubtless more legendary than correct one curious and mysterious substance mentioned by blythe and known in india as mucor phycomyces is stated to be a species of fungi when the spores are administered in warm water they are said to attach themselves to the throat and rapidly develop and grow with the result that in a few weeks all the symptoms of consumption develop and the victim is rapidly carried off by that fatal disease the early hebrews were also acquainted with certain poisons the words rosh and kema being used by them as generic terms 
arsenic was known to them as sam aconite as boshka and ergot simply as son the ancients attributed poisonous properties to certain bodies simply on account of their origin being mysterious and obscure and many of these errors and traditions have been handed down for centuries as an instance of this the belief that diamond dust possessed deadly poisonous properties seems to have existed until recent times many mysterious deaths in the middle ages were attributed to it there is little doubt that death might be caused by the mere mechanical effect of an insoluble powder of this kind if it were possible to introduce it into the stomach in sufficient quantity but powdered glass or sand would have the same effect as diamond dust viz in causing violent irritation of the stomach yet some of these old traditions have a substratum of fact the poisonous properties of the toad have long been regarded as fabulous but recent investigation has proved that the skin of a species of toad secretes a poison similar in action to digitalis the venom of the toad has had the reputation of possessing poisonous properties from a very early period and was probably one of the earliest forms of animal poison known the old tradition that king john was poisoned by a friar who dropped a toad into his wine was regarded as a ridiculous fable until some years ago when it was discovered that the skin of the toad secretes a body the active principle of which frinin is a poison of considerable power one of the most curious uses to which the toad has been put is recorded on a medical diploma now in the library of ferrara which was granted to one generoso marini in sixteen forty two marini having made application for a ferrari's diploma in medicine the judge in whom the power of granting such degrees was invested ordered him to exhibit some efficient proofs of his capability to practice the medical art marini at once agreed to comply with their demand and the result is recorded in his diploma which was discovered by citadella in the archives of ferrara and is translated as follows having publicly examined and approved the science and knowledge of medicine of signor geroso marini and his possession of the wonderful secret called orvietano which he exhibited on the stage built in the centre of this our city of ferrara in presence of its entire population so remarkable for their civilization and learning and in presence of many foreigners and other classes of people we hereby certify that also in our presence as well as that of the city authorities he took several living toads not those of his own providing but from a great number of toads which had been caught in fields in the locality by persons who were strangers to him and which were only handed to him at the moment of making the experiment an officer of the court then selected from the number of toads collected five of the largest which the said generoso marini placed on a bench before him and in presence of all assembled spectators he with a large knife cut all the said toads in half then taking a drinking cup he took in each hand one half of a dead toad and squeezed from it all the juices and fluids it contained into the cup and the same he did with the remainder after mixing the contents together he swallowed the whole and then placing the cup on the bench he advanced to the edge of the stage where for some minutes he remained stationary then he became pale as death and his limbs trembled and his body began to swell in a frightful and terrible manner and all the spectators began to believe that he would never recover from the poison he had swallowed and that his death was certain suddenly taking from a jar by his side some of his celebrated orvietano he placed a portion of it in his mouth and swallowed it instantly the effect of this wonderful medicine was to make him vomit the poison he had taken and he stood before the spectators in the full enjoyment of health 
footnote the celebrated urvia tano was doubtless some preparation of antimony End footnote the populace applauded him highly for the indisputable proof he had given of his talent and he then invited many of the most learned of those present to accompany him to his house and he there showed them his dispensary as well as his collection of antidotes and among them a powder made from little vipers a powerful remedy for curing every sort of fever as he had proved by different experiments he had made on people of quality and virtue all of whom he had cured of the fever from which they were suffering etc in consequence of the rare talent exhibited by signor generoso marini and as a proof of our love and respect for his wisdom we have resolved by the authority placed in our hands publicly to reward him with a diploma so that he may be universally recognized applauded and respected in witness thereof we have set our hands and the public seal of the municipality of ferrara data in ferrara con grandissimo applauso il di twenty six lugio sixteen forty two Johannes Cagitanus Modoni, Index Apianum Civitatis Ferrari, Franciscus Altamari, Cancellarius. But although the toad, under certain conditions, was credited with poisonous properties, during the Middle Ages it was esteemed a valuable remedy for the plague, and was employed for that purpose in Austria as late as the year 1712 cantharides or spanish fly was very commonly used as a poison in medieval times the usual method of administering being to chop it up and mix it with pepper it is said to have been the first poison tried on the unfortunate sir thomas overbury although his murderers finally finished him off with corrosive sublimate poisoned rings are said to have been the invention of the italians who fashioned rings in which the poison was inserted in a receptacle where the jewel is usually set attached to the inner part of the ring was a sharp point which when the hand of the wearer was grasped scratched the flesh and injected the poison rings were also used for carrying strong poison secretly such as arsenic or corrosive sublimate and in this manner many were enabled to commit suicide after being imprisoned hyuscyamus commonly called henbane is a herb which has been employed from remote times benedictus crispus archbishop of milan in a work written shortly before a d six eighty one alludes to it under the name of hyuscyamus and symphoniaca and in the tenth century its virtues are particularly recorded by Masser floridus in the early anglo-saxon works it is called henbel and sometimes baleen in a french herbal of the fifteenth century it is called hannibane or hennebane from a very early period it has been employed as a sedative and anodyne for producing sleep although simple hallucinations sometimes accompany its use an old tradition states that once on the refectory of an ancient monastery the monks were served with henbane instead of some harmless root in error by the cook after partaking of the dish they were seized with the most extraordinary hallucinations at midnight one monk sounded the bell for matins while others walked in the chapel and opened their books but could not read others sang roistering drinking songs and performed mountebank antics which convulsed the others with uncontrollable laughter and the pious monastery for the nonce was turned into an asylum certain stones which were sold for large sums of money were supposed to change colour when brought near a poisonous substance and they were consequently much sought after by high personages the horn of the unicorn was said to become moist when placed near poisoned food bickman records his belief that several slow poisons were known to the ancients which cannot now be identified the carthaginians also seemed to have been acquainted with similar poisons and according to tradition administered some to regulus the roman general 
but we cannot endorse Bickman's belief. An incident which happened to the army led by Mark Antony, against the Parthians, and described by Plutarch, is said to have been caused by Aconite. At one time during the expedition, the soldiers, being very short of provisions, sought for roots and pot-herbs, and met one that brought on madness and death. The eater immediately lost all memory and knowledge, busying himself at the same time in turning and moving every stone he met with, as if he were on some important pursuit. The camp was full of unhappy men stooping to the ground and digging up and removing stones, till at last they were carried off by bilious vomiting. Whole numbers perished, and the Parthians still continued to harass them. Antony is said to have frequently exclaimed, "'Oh, the ten thousand!' alluding to the army which Xenophon led in retreat. Both a longer way and through more numerous conflicts, and yet led in safety. Nine active or virulent poisons are mentioned by most ancient writers on Indian medicine, many of which are at present not identified. Most of them are apparently varieties of aconite. Besides these, they employed opium, gunja, datura, roots of nerium odorum, and gloriosa superba, the milky juices of Calotropus gigantea, and Euphorbia nerifolia, white arsenic, orpiment, and the poison extracted from the fangs of serpents. Most of the older Sanskrit manuscripts are written on paper, prepared with orpiment to preserve them from the ravages of insects. Three varieties of datura yield atropine, a powerful poison. These plants were frequently employed in India for putting a sudden end to domestic quarrels, and to this practice may be traced the origin of the custom of sati, or widow-burning, as the Brahmins found from experience that by making a wife's life conterminous with the husband's, the average husband lived considerably longer. It is worthy of note that the diamond was celebrated as a medicinal agent by the Hindus, who prepared it by roasting seven times and then reducing it to powder. It was given in doses of one grain as a powerful tonic. End of chapter 1